Okay, everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm back, obviously, for another recipe today. Uh, today, we are going to take it to the grill. Um, and I'm doing a smoked pork butt, okay? There's not much to this. You can't really mess this recipe up, okay? I'm gonna be doing this on a gas grill, not a charcoal grill, but I am gonna smoke it. I'll show you how I do it and what that's all about. There's literally a few ingredients here. Um, there's obviously the pork butt um, with the bone in. Uh, you try to always do them with the bone in, you'll get a little bit more flavor, it'll stay a little bit more moist for you. So I have my pork butt here. I have some hickory uh, smoked, uh, actually just hickory chips that I'll use for smoking, I should say. Uh, I have my squirt bottle. Um, it's just a normal squirt bottle, you can pick this up anyways. Anywhere you can get this at a hardware store. You can get these at Walmart. You can probably get these at any local place you get your groceries. Okay, uh, that's filled with apple apple cider vinegar, and this I will use to keep the top and sides of the pork butt moist through cooking. Okay, uh, I have some seasoning here as well. Um, I have some Blackstone all-purpose seasoning, uh, just so you know. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know pretty much what's in this. Um, we have some salt in this. We have some chili pepper in that, brown sugar, garlic powder, onion powder, got some paprika for color, and there's a little bit of hickory smoked um, flavor in this. So between this and the hickory smoked wood chips, we should get a nice, we should get a nice bark off this and we should get a nice uh, smoke ring in this, okay? And I have, because I don't have a actual um, smoker box, uh, I'm just using, uh, and there's nothing wrong with this, uh, you're just using some Reynolds uh, Easy Foil Packs, okay? I have two of them, okay? It's because what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill these up, a couple, two handfuls, three handfuls. In this, we're gonna cover this with aluminum foil, poke a couple holes in it, put it over the hottest part of the burner, and get these going. Okay, so this is pretty much all that this consists of. And we're gonna roast this or grill this uh, indirect heating on this, by the way. Uh, it's about an hour and a half per pound. Uh, this says this is, this is a small pork butt um, because I'm not doing pork, uh, pulled pork sandwiches with this. I'm doing something else with this recipe. So I don't need like an eight pound uh, pork roast, okay? or uh, pork butt. So this is about three, three and a half pounds. So I'm anticipating that that's gonna be five to six hours, okay? All right, so let me just remove some of this stuff and we'll get going with this recipe. Again, no big deal, anybody can do this. If you ever wanna smoke pork butt, follow along on this recipe and we'll, we'll, we'll help you out, we'll get you going on this. So we're just gonna move all this stuff. We're gonna push this stuff aside and we are just going to we're just going to take this out of the packet, and we're going to put this we're going to put this on the cutting board. Okay, so you can see our bone is right here. Okay, and then on the back side, you have a little bit of fat cap back here. Now you can shave that down if you want to. Some people keep it, some people don't. It's all preference. If you want to keep it, keep it. Um, what's going to happen to this after roasting this uh, on the grill for a little bit is this is going to turn into like a gelatin, right? You're going to stick your finger in it, and what's going to happen is it's going to get kind of um, kind of gummy. Uh, it's going to stick to your finger, and then you know exactly where you are with this piece of meat. So this piece of meat has a lot of connective tissue in it. Um, it's from the obviously it's from the shoulder um, of the pig so um, It takes a while to cook this. This is the reason why we make these and we cook these low and slow Temperature is only going to be about 250 to 275 on this consistently Hopefully we can hold the temperature uh, which I don't see a problem doing that um, And that's what we're going to do. Um, we're just going to take a little bit of this fat off. Now people do take it and just score it like this as well. Okay, so you can do this. You could kind of checkerboard it to get a little bit more flavor down in the meat if you wanted to do that. 
I'm going to take a little bit of this fat cap off, not a lot, um, just, uh, just a little bit, just until you can almost see, you can almost see right there, the actual meat coming through. Now there's not, the butcher did a really good job on this, there's really not a lot of, of fat on this, okay, this, they did actually a really good job, um, but I'm just going to clean it up just a little bit, like literally just a little bit. Um, there's no big fat marks or pieces hanging out, so we are done with that, okay? Take off as much fat as you want, leave as much fat on as you want to as well. It doesn't matter, leave it on, take it off. Um, all right, so that's it for that. So now I'm going to just clean off my hands a little bit, and we're going to get going on the rub, okay? So we're going to be really generous with this. We're going to be, we want to coat this um, evenly, right? We don't want a lot of, we don't want a lot of, uh, and then we're going to just press it. Like I said, all pork roast, I mean, you really can't, and you can mess it up. You can mess anything up if you want to bad enough. Um, but this is what we're doing, giving this a nice coat and the brown sugar that's in there is going to melt down it's going to make it it's going to make it beautiful okay coat make sure you coat all sides just like that don't be afraid to get your hand in there right just like that and so this is a little bit has a little bit of a of a tang to it as far as not a tang but Maybe a little bit of uh, because of the chili, the chili powder uh, that's in this. So this is what we're going to do. We're just going to clear up our cutting board, get all the the excess stuff off. Don't be afraid. Roll it around. Make sure you use all your seasoning if you can. Make sure the edges are nice and coated. I try to leave one hand clean. Okay. So this is our pork butt. We're all seasoned up. We are all ready to go. Okay. Um, this, just so you guys know, this seasoning was about $6 for a whole bottle. You'll get numerous pork roast out of this, um, or any other meats, ribs, whatever, use this. Uh, this is a decent product. Um, okay, so our pork roast is all set. I am going to go fire up the grill, and we're going to show you um, what's next. I'm just going to get cleaned up, and I'll be back with you guys in just a couple of minutes. All right, so really quick, I'm going to show you guys how to uh, just do the, the, the smoking chips here to get your smoke up. Uh, very simple. Like I said in the first segment, a couple minutes ago, you're just using uh, a foiled pan. I don't know how big these are, but if you look at the a normal size hand, it's about maybe the size of your hand. Um, it's probably about two inches deep uh, as well. So you should get a nice smoke off this. You should get maybe... Uh, I'm hoping to get 30 to 45 minutes off of each one, uh, and if this has to go five hours, you're going to be changing these in and out. Um, that's why I have two of these going on here, okay? Um, there's a big thing about soak your wood chips, don't smoke your wood chips. For this recipe, I'm not going to smoke my wood chips because I'll get a quicker smoke off that. If you wet them and you put them on your grill, you're going to get a lot of, obviously, condensation that's going to, you know, it's going to kind of gas off, you know, right? You're going to get that moisture um, before you get the smoke. So I want the smoke pretty much right away. That's why I'm doing dry wood chips. Um, so this is it. This is this is what we're going to do. We're just uh, really simple. You're just going to take a couple handfuls just like this. Okay. Get each one. Like this, I'd say fill it about maybe a, a quarter to a half uh, full, because once these start burning, these will these will go for a little bit. Um, okay, so this is all we're doing. We're just adding wood chips to these. All right, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to take some aluminum foil, and it's important to try to get this as tight as you can. So kind of pinch underneath each one and do one end first then kind of pull and stretch 
and do this side over here and then you know that from front to back you're pretty you're pretty tight okay which well I'll leave that out but so this is what you want to do okay so it's as simple as that now you got a nice taunt um, top to your your spa uh, your wood chips okay so again I'm just doing this spin it around go taunt with that as well and then we're going to fold that under and we're going to fold this side under as well okay and now the only other thing we're going to do is we're just going to poke a couple of holes in it now i'm not going to poke uh, a lot of holes in it okay we're just going to poke like maybe three holes in it the more holes that you have uh, in these uh, the more that your wood chips are going to burn faster so we're trying to get a slow burn on these make them last a little bit longer and that's really about it that's the only reason why i poke just a, a, a few holes in them some people might poke a lot of holes in them you know this is just the way i choose them choose to do this today you can do this any way you want to it's a long smoking process like i said this pork butt's probably going to take about five hours ish uh, it's going to be on the grill for probably three to three and a half i would estimate um maybe i'm estimating wrong but probably three and a half hours on that and then once the smoking process is done it's done okay oh, one other thing i wanted to uh mention here um if anybody is in the market for a flexible boning knife uh this is a victor knox knife okay this is a great product okay so if you're in the mood for a boning knife i would say head this way uh, i know a lot of butchers use this i've seen a lot of meat cutters use this knife excellent you can get this um you i think you can get this on amazon uh, i'm not being sponsored by these guys i just think it's a great knife um so you can go there they're about i don't know 45 dollars or something like that for a knife so if you're in the move for a boning knife do a victor knox okay so um that's it for this segment my grill is heating up out there I'm going to get it to the right temperature and then we're going to go drop the wood chips on um, and then we're going to put the pork butt on and then we're just going to let it go low and slow okay um, hopefully this won't be a long video but hopefully it'll get a great result at the end and some pretty good food okay um, I'll be back when I go put this on the grill okay so I'm outside I'm just gonna fill you guys in on what I did so far um, I cleaned my grill, I turned all my burners on high, I burned anything that could possibly be on the grill. Um, so the only thing we're going to do right now is we're just going to take this, and these are our wood chips, I'm going to stick them in the back of the grill, okay? So every grill is a little bit different, okay? My burners actually run uh, one, two, three, and four, okay? Um, some grills might go this way one two three and then four in the back mine happened to run this way so we're doing an indirect uh, process here today um, so I only have the the left uh, burner over here and that's the only one that's lit we're looking for a target temperature of anywhere between 250 and 275 and that is what it's going to be for the rest of the cooking process um, I okay. just want to show you what I did on the inside so it's indirect so we're only going to be heating on this side we're going to be cooking on this side only so what i did as you can see i removed the grate over here i put the wood chips directly on there and you can see they are starting to smoke so they are giving off um a little bit of uh a, an odor right now a little bit of the a little bit of the smoke so right now is where we're going to turn around and we are going to put um we're going to turn around and we're going to put our pork roast on and once we put this on that's it we're just going to leave it there okay so I'm just going to pick it up i'm just going to put it on just like that and that is going to be the end of this we're going to close the lid i'm not going to leave the lid up too high because yeah we're still getting smoke there we go we're still getting it so those chips are definitely those chips are definitely doing their thing um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put another one on 
because it takes a little while for this to get going. So I figure in another half hour, the second one that I just put on will be going. And this is what our pork roast looks like. Now, it's still, you know, not even thinking about being done. It's only in the first hour. So we're going to leave this right here. And we're just going to keep it going. We're gonna okay, so I am on my second hour um, of this pork butt. I keep saying pork roast. It is not a pork roast. It is a pork butt. Um, I've been smoking this for two hours now. Uh, the one problem that I did have is you can see the temperature here is reading almost 400 degrees. This is why I don't like these dome things at all temperatures. The thermometers hate them. Uh, I wound up repoking uh, the, ro the uh, pork butt and then this is the actual temperature. Now right now it's 266. It has uh, been steady between 273 and 277. So, so the reason why you're getting a difference in temperature is because if you look, and I, you know, if some of you guys know this or don't know this, on the side right here, you have a hole here for ventilation. You have another one on the other side for ventilation as well. Well, today happens to be where you're getting a little bit of a um, little bit of wind. So when the wind is blowing from the left side of the grill over to the right side of the grill, your number here, your temperature, will heat up. When it goes to the other side. Of where the probe is, it'll actually cool down. But you're averaging about 275 is exactly where I need to be. So keep in mind that the thermometer that is built in the grill, which is up here, it's about 105 degrees off. So if you guys are cooking and you're using this as your guide, I don't recommend it. So here's what I wound up doing. See now you're up to you're up to 270. So we've been averaging 275. I did get the first hour pretty low. Okay, so here's what we got. So this is what I did. If you remember when you were in school, you put the safety pin through the skin of your thumb. Well, or at least I did. Um, this is basically what I did here. I just pierced the meat and left the probe sticking up so I can get an actual temperature of the air temperature blowing across the top of the roast. Uh, I did change my foil pack out over here for some smoke. And what we're going to do here now, you can see it's starting to get all all nice and juicy everything's starting to flow over here it looks good um, I'm starting to build a little crust on it when I touch it I'm not going to turn around and uh, hit it with any apple cider vinegar yet but what I am going to do because I ha actually had a light I only had this burner lit and then I couldn't get my temperature uh, it was like 180 degrees, so I was like 100 degrees low. I had to turn around and fire up this burner. Now it's perfect. Um, so I had the first hour was a little bit low, and now all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to turn around and I'm just going to turn this now. Okay, so this is all we're going to do because I'll explain why I'm doing this um, and I'm going to actually move it over just a little bit not too much um, okay so this is good okay so we're all we're all ready to go for the next round you can see this fat cap starting to separate we're building some nice crust good flavor this is what we need um, we're going to do this we're going to close the lid because I just lost a ton of heat we're going to close it and look at how much heat you lose when you do that. It's down to 160. That heat will come right back up probably within a matter of three or four minutes. We're going to let this keep smoking and we're going to check back with this in one more hour. Okay, so we're into this for about two hours and 45 minutes now. Um, I'm on my last smoke um, right now. I don't think I'm going to do another one. I'm just trying to get this now um to 160 degrees and uh right now i'm at 127 so i got a little bit to go but i think this will be my last smoke and then i'll start doing uh spraying it with uh, some apple cider vinegar and we'll just continue it there but in another 15 minutes which will be a basically a snap of the wrist um i'll be back to show you what it looks like at the three hour mark okay very good 
All right, so here we are in hour number three. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah, look at it. Huh? Okay. Very nice. Still got some more time to go. But that's hour number three. I'm now done smoking it, so whatever little bit of smoke is left over here, um, I'm just going to let it do its thing. The juices are running. We probably still got a couple more hours, I would say, left in this particular uh, cook. So I did, uh, the only thing I did do was I did, I did probe it uh, for the middle to get an inside temperature. Uh, we're cooking this until uh, 160 in the middle, okay? So at 160, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap it up in heavy duty aluminum foil. And from that point, we can either leave it on the grill or we can put it in the oven because it's not going to accept any more smoke at that point. And all you're doing is just cooking the internal temperature to anywhere between 195 and 200 degrees. I'll probably go on the top end to about 198, 200. And then this is going to rest for an hour. And then we can pull this apart and we can see exactly what a five to six hour smoke has done for us. So I'm not going to... Um, I'm not going to spray this with vinegar yet because the top is still nice and moist. Uh, we're just going to close the lid and we're just going to keep continuing on this. This is looking very, very good. Um, take your time, do this the right way, and the results will be great. Okay, so, so uh, this was the last actual... This is now done as far as the grill goes. Now, I do want to let you guys know that if you want to turn around and and you want to that was pretty smart huh grab a hot probe <laughs> okay um, if you guys want to I'm sorry about that if you guys want to at this point uh, finish this off on the grill you can um, there's nothing wrong with that um, if you want to now take this and put this in the oven in the house to control temperature if you were uh, a little concerned about holding temperature on your grill, uh, you can do that. I'm choosing to put this in a preheated oven of 275 and finish this off. Now the internal temperature now is at 160. This needs to go to 200 degrees. That's where I'm going to finish this in the oven now. All right. I did spray this a couple times with some um, apple cider vinegar uh, every half hour for the last uh, hour and a half. So this has now been on for about four hours and 15 minutes at this point. So I'm just going to put this aside here and let's see if we can make this work. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to transfer this to my, we got a nice little crust on that too. Okay, so we're just going to put it in the pan, and I am then going to take this and wrap it in aluminum foil and put it in the oven. So and I'm I back in the house, and here is my pork roast. Or I keep calling it a pork roast. I don't know why I keep doing that. Uh, my um, pork shoulder. I just have to shut that alarm off. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, all we're going to do is, we're going to put this on a piece of aluminum foil, okay, and we're going to wrap this up, okay, we're just going to roll it and wrap it up. Now, I am using heavy duty aluminum foil, make sure the ends, you actually tuck them in like a gift, okay, just like that, and now we're going to take another piece. of heavy duty aluminum foil. I know I stressed heavy duty aluminum foil just then, but when you put this on the rack in your oven, I just, I have a always a bad thing that it's gonna, it's gonna score through. So, um, always heavy duty aluminum foil on this. This is what we're doing, just like this. And now, I just crease it down like this and pull up, just like that. Crease it down, just like that and pull up. Okay, so now our pork, um, our, our pork shoulder, I'll get that right one of these times, one of these times, 
so our pork shoulder is uh, done and now it's going to go in the oven for however long it takes really um, I got about 40 degrees to go this came off the grill at exactly 160 uh, it's got to go to 200 so, okay, so we're just going to take our pork shoulder put it right in make sure that these seams here that you folded are up so if it leaks anything it's at least caught in the aluminum foil uh, that's what we're going to do that's it 275 uh, this is set on and we're just going to let this go until it hits 200 degrees even and we will see you then all right so look what i got here uh the the uh, pork uh, butt is done uh, i put it um uh, in the oven as you guys know on um 300 until the internal temperature of this reached 205 degrees and then i pulled it the only other thing i did here was i let this rest for about an hour and a half so now we get to see what the end result of this pork butt is which is like it's unwrapping a christmas present <laughs> All right, so let's see what we got here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that bark. Huh? Is that gorgeous? Or is that gorgeous? Okay. Um, so all together, I started prepping this at 9.30 in the morning. It is now 25 after 6 in the evening. So I've been on this for, I started cooking it at 10. It came out at five. So, you know, that's how long, that's how long it took, right? Uh, 10 o'clock, it took about, uh, I've been on this piece of meat for about seven hours, but the whole thing with this is, is, let me see if I can do this without it falling apart. I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna, Put this up here for you guys now there's also quite a bit of juice in here we're gonna save that you can see all the juice that it rendered all right so we're gonna set that aside and then we're gonna take we're gonna take this bone over here and see how it comes out yeah look absolutely clean as a bell okay so we're gonna take that we're gonna stick that aside and I'm gonna start tearing into this a little bit and see exactly what we, oh, it just, just falls apart. Just falls apart, look at, look at how nice and, and juicy that is. It's not dry, not by any stretch of the imagination is this dry. So, let's just start getting into this a little bit and pulling this, you, you don't even have to and this is still hot too um, I'm not going to be making like a pork uh, a pork sandwich with this but whew, that's still hot I think I'm gonna be using the fork here so let's just let's just do this type of thing let it just shreds right open this is beautiful I've been looking forward to this all day long and I'm so happy that this came out I smoked it three rounds um, basically in my terminology I guess uh, I put uh, three of those wood uh, chips the containers uh, in here so this is ooh, wow, this is really this is so juicy so nice so I just wanted to show you guys what this looks like I'm gonna stick the bone over there so this is and there's a nice crust on it it's beautiful so this is how we're gonna i'm all i'm all dirty here um so i'm just gonna wipe my hands off and then we're gonna close this video out um the juice if you shred all this i'm not shredding it all because i'm not using all of this right now the more you rip apart the more tendency it has to dry out so what I'm going to wind up doing if you guys rip this all apart and shred this I would put it in some kind of pan and pour the juice back over it 
put some aluminum foil over it and just let it chill out for a little while till it cools down then put it in the refrigerator and um, you know if you're not going to eat it fresh like this let me let me try a little bit of this hold on no oh, it's um, awesome awesome stuff all right so you guys got the recipe to this this is what we did today I hope you guys enjoy this recipe um, it's a seven hour deal but it's so well worth it so we're gonna end the recipe here and um, you know like I always do if you guys like this recipe put a thumbs up share this video click on the notification bell I post a new recipe every single week um, and I guess we'll see you in the next video uh, I got some good stuff coming up uh, after I get done with the summertime uh, sides and barbecues and stuff like that we're gonna go into fall so we're gonna be making some soups uh, some pasta vizool some Italian wedding soups, some maness you Italian people that are out there that watch my channel you'll know exactly what maness is it's basically beans and greens we're gonna be making some of that we're gonna be making uh, sauce and meatballs and lasagnas and uh, eggplant and all kinds of stuff so stay tuned for all that stuff coming up in the fall all right like I said if you guys like this put a thumbs up uh, hit that notification bell you'll get a notification every single time I post a new video uh, every single week either on a Friday or a Saturday okay that's it that's it for me for today I'm gonna have a little bit of pulled pork and I'm gonna relax for the rest of the night um, you guys be kind to people do something for a neighbor uh, smile at somebody it might make their day okay that's it for me i will see you guys in the next recipe take care of yourselves